Proverbs 18, 24. A man that hath friends must show himself friendly. And there is a friend that sticketh closer than a brother. Who is this friend that sticks closer than a brother? Jesus. The love that Jesus shows us every single day of our lives and through his death, burial, and the resurrection on that cross is why we are here today. Why we were yet sinners, Christ loved us. And because he loved us, he saved us. Not necessarily because we are worthy, but again, because he loves us. And one that loves his friends loves indiscriminately. They love their friend unconditionally with no strings attached. They love their friend just as they love themselves. This is very, very important to remember because some of us have so-called friends and acquaintances and those that we fellowship with that the Lord is saying, let go, examine, take a closer look at your sphere of influence, those that are closest to you, those that you sleep with, those that you eat with, those that you converse with every day. And most importantly, take a look at what's happening within you. Some of you are thirsting for the Father. And it seems as if you're in this barren place where nothing is happening, where it's difficult to give birth maybe to a dream or a promise or something that God has told you long ago and it may not have come to pass. Some goals or things that you may want to accomplish and you're saying, when? How much longer, Lord? And it's causing you to feel as if Sometimes you're spiritually dead and sometimes as a result, we speed up and go ahead of God instead of waiting patiently on him, no matter how long it takes. And when we do this, when we run ahead of God, absent his spirit, which is also his approval to go ahead and do that thing, it can lead to a wilderness. It can lead to a desert place. It can lead to a valley. But God specializes in the valley of the shadow of death. When all else seems to fail, when it seems like you are alone and nobody understands or this particular thing, they just cannot help you with, even if they think they understand or may be able to relate. No one can get you out of this situation but the Father. But sometimes it looks like the Father is still taking too long and you begin to question yourself. God, did you really speak? God, am I supposed to be in this place right now? God, should I still wait on you? Or should I continue to move forward? Shall I pursue it? It leads to many problems when we don't wait and we do things independently of God. See, God has a set time, a set schedule, a specific place where his purpose and plans for your life in this stage of your life and the next until he calls you home, even when he calls you home, is on his appointed scheduled calendar. He knows the beginning from the end and everything in between, every crack, crevice, twist, and turn, every pathway, every rock, every wall, every barrier, and he knows how you're going to go under it to get to the other side. He knows how you're going to climb over it to get to the other side. He knows how you're going to bulldoze through that wall to get to the other side. God wants us to get our house in order. Not just the place where we lie our heads down to sleep every night. Not the place where we frequent every day and spend most of our time. Not the place where our family and, and us are under one roof. But he wants 
us to get our bodies, the temple that houses the Holy Ghost in order. And it may not mean that you are so caught up and bound up and entangled in sin. It could be a very small matter like waiting and not running ahead of the father, not doing things independently because he has the perfect time. He has the appointed time where your breakthrough comes, where that promise manifests itself, where that child gets off of drugs, where that husband or that wife comes so that you can marry one another in holy matrimony, the spouse that is that the father has for you. The time where that unbelieving husband is going to believe. That time where that unbelieving wife that tears down her house with her own mouth will hear from the Lord and get it right. That time when that wayward child will come back home. God has the time for everything and he has not forgotten about you. But there is a need for a regeneration in the spirit regeneration for this generation beginning with the household of faith i see in the spirit and god knows some of you are wanting to be right with god you want to be clean you want to be pure and see this is right where god wants you this is a posture of humility and trust unto the father knowing that he's able to save and deliver even if you go around that spiral and that wheel over and over again doing things that you won't, don't want to do but find yourself doing them over and over but you want so bad to be made right with God and God ha, he heard you the first time even the words you didn't speak from your mouth the thoughts in your head and the condition of your heart God is able to interpret it. He understands. The Holy Spirit understands. And he's going to make you right with him. Actually, you already made right, if you think about it, through the sacrificial death, burial, and resurrection on the cross that Jesus Christ did just for you. No greater love than for one to lay down his life for his friend unconditionally. God wants to change you from the inside and out, clothing you with a robe of salvation, robes of righteousness in every area of your life, making you complete. The Holy Spirit is upon you and he's cleansing you. And because you're getting clean and you're allowing him to do a great work within you, it's spilling over to those that you've been praying for, those that you've been hoping for, those that you may have had a few fusses and fights and arguments with because you love them so much you just want to get it right. You want them to get it right. You want your relationship with them to get right. God heard you the first time and he sees and because you are getting right and you are getting clean and you've humbled yourself, it's going to spill over to them to overflow in the name of Jesus. Some of you have been tricked for a long time. See, the devil has assigned demons or a demon to every single person on this earth. Even if that person is not saved, even if they haven't received Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, everyone has a satanic spirit or spirits assigned to them, assigned to their family to keep them in oppression, depression, bondage, even though it may differ from one family to the next, from one person to the next, what type of bondage or problem this thing may be generationally even. And so God is coming to open your eyes so that you can clearly see the enemy has hired hirelings. These fake folk that say that they care about you. These fake folk that are in your life only to watch your every mood and hopefully hoping that you never get to a place of freedom, that you never get to that place of abundant life. Hoping and praying P-R-E-Y-I-N-G 
that you never do better than them. Praying that you never get a breakthrough sent of the devil and based on their own securities and stereotypes in this world. There's some of you that God is bringing into a place of ownership. And for some of you that own, even expanding that into more. I even see debt cancellation. Now, don't get too excited. Get excited, but not too excited. I, I want you to hear this. I need you to lean in a little closer. See, debt cancellation, God can do supernaturally. It's so many of us, us, including myself, God has moved supernaturally. But then there's those times too where God will ensure you have that money. However, he gets it to you. If it's through a debt consolidation or debt resolution program or whatever it is, somebody could place the money in your hand. You could work for the money, whatever it is. Settlements, you could settle with the creditor. However, God decides to work it, that debt is going to be canceled if he does it supernaturally or if it is paid for even from your own hand. Don't try to figure out how it's going to happen. Just work it. You do what God tells you to do. Do what you sense in your spirit. Allow God to lead you and guide you without overthinking it too hard, putting yourself in this situation and watch what shall come of it. There's some people that have taken advantage of you, some things you didn't know, some things you were never taught, some things you may have heard along the way in your adulthood, but you never really figured out how to put it together. And for some of you, you may not really trust people like that to tell them the most vulnerable places and most sensitive topics of your life, but you can trust God. God is going to show you who to connect to. Go into prayer. Lord, who do I need to connect to in this season of my life? Who do I need to let go of in my life? Some of you, God has already shown you crystal clear. But because it's not really what you want to hear, or you may be afraid of the outcome of the matter, or what may happen to that particular relationship, you don't move. But see, this is time-sensitive information. I sense in the Holy Spirit. And when it's time-sensitive and God says move, you make a move. Because as you know, some blessings in particular are conditional blessings. So if you don't do as God tells you to do when exactly how he says, you are at risk of missing that blessing. And who says it may come back around? That's disobedience to the father. Some of you have low income and, and people have scammed you so many times in your life. Again, this stereotypical stuff. Some of your esteems are so low, so you just take anything that anybody gives you. Some of you are so prideful, you don't want to let anybody see that you may be struggling or you may have questions that you need to ask or you may not know how to do this. You don't want to be caught off guard. But see, God specializes in humility and he's able to cover you. God will cover you in those areas where you may think the people know because the devil gets sometimes in our head. But... If you allow that is, but they really don't know because God has a way of, a, of covering you when the devil wants to expose you. It will not be. For others of you, it's time to own. Some of you have been renting too much. Give them people back their stuff. That's a great way to get out of debt. It's not putting yourself deeper and deeper into these situations. Let people talk. Sometimes you might have to take the temporary deem so that you can build on the proper foundation, which is God, obedience to his word. He will show you how to steward. He would show you what to buy. He will show you how to get yourself out of this mess that you've gotten yourself into. The plan is already written in heaven. He just needs you to abide by the plan. Just hear him and heed him. 
I hear God saying in the spirit, I sense it so strongly, so strong. It's time to come out of that rent phase and it's time for you to own. There's houses you didn't build and vineyards that you didn't plant. No longer when you build, will you build and another inhabits. Oh no, you're going to build this thing and you're going to inhabit it yourself. God knows when, he knows how. Don't give up. You are right at the cusp of what God has promised you. I mean, you are right there, literally there. And the devil is trying to do everything that he possibly can to get you to take steps backwards. Danger, danger. There is nothing back there. Press forward and keep it moving in Jesus Christ's name. Some of you are, are going backwards. You're kind of like in a place of tug of war. You know that God is, is bringing you into something new. Sometimes you get excited. Actually, some of you oftentimes get very excited because you can't see it and you may not see how it's going to happen, how this thing is going to evolve. But it's like an excitement that just comes over you. Because you sense that God is doing something and that he's going to answer these prayers. But then the old way of doing things don't want to let you go. And some of you people are feeding off of that. The devil is feeding off that energy that you're giving to the old thing. And that's why many times you are stuck. That's why you are in a fight. You're going to have to let that thing go. Come hell or high water. You're going to have to let that thing go. You're going to have to fast like you've never fasted. You're going to have to pray like you've never prayed. you got to believe like you've never believed. You've got to get in that word like you've never gotten into the word before. That's where your strength will come from. And you'll be able to hear God clearly. And be able to differentiate when it is the Holy Spirit, the Father speaking, when it's you speaking, and when it's the devil speaking. No longer God is saying, I sense so strongly, I really believe, will you be tricked and taken advantage of. If you take advantage of this opportunity that the Father is presenting, if you do this thing the way he's telling you to do, it's going to come with a fight, of course. But you've already won. It's a fixed fight. It's already fixed. <laughs> so you have the upper hand. Nothing can compare to what God has for you. You've already won. And yes, it's certainly going to come with sacrifice. You're going to have to give up something to grab hold to everything that the Father has for you. These demons, these hirelings, these people that stereo uh, that put you in these stereotypical matters that thinks the worst of you, these so-called friends, these relationships that you really need to break off and keep away from you. They're hoping that you gravitate and stay stuck to the old. But I see God is sending an angel to snatch you out right in time. Some of you, the father has already sent an angel right before you made the wrong decision that would have cost you everything. He's going to dispatch angels all around you and you have angels even now as we speak working around the clock. From here, there, everywhere, ascending and descending to heaven, to earth, back to heaven, to get orders from the Father, back to earth, to carry those orders out just for you. The Lord loves you more than you can ever imagine. So stop also while we're at it, entertaining the voices of the enemy that lies and tells you the Lord doesn't care. It's going to always be like this. This is too hard. Some of you are cursing yourself and your blessings and stopping and blocking and delaying your own blessings because you don't know how to put a lid on your mouth. But in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, we decree and declare that's a thing of the past. You will know and you know when to speak and what to speak. When to be quiet. 
in the name of Jesus. No longer are you going to curse your own destiny and others in Jesus Christ's name because of your words that proceed from your mouth. You are not basic. You are there is nothing basic about you. There is nothing that God made a mistake about when he created you. You are extra, yeah, <laughs> extraordinary. You're extra in a good way. Some people can't handle you. Some people get turned off by you. They just dislike you because of the light and the glory and the anointing that is on you. Even when you are full of sin, even when you may be full of chaos, even when you are full of disobedience, that still does not negate that you are a child, a legitimate child of the Most High God. And he knows exactly what to do to get what he desires up out of you. So set your eyes on the kingdom of God. Set your ears to the throne of heaven and hear what God has to say. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, no longer will you be scammed in the spirit. You shall be sharp in the name of Jesus. Your intellectual prowess shall be ignited like never ever before you are smart you are intelligent you can do all things through Christ Jesus who gives you the strength and you will be fit and you are fit for the kingdom of God in these end times and when the father blesses you never love the blessing more than the father never forget the father in your blessing and also don't forget people because the father never blesses us to bless us. It's always to expand the kingdom, to be a blessing to other people. Though you must be careful and discerning because some people don't deserve to sit at your table. Instead, God is preparing that table in their presence. Some of them mean you no good. They were like vicious dogs behind your back. They curse you. And as a Judas, they kiss you on the cheek. But God is saying enough of that is enough. At the same time, don't hate them. Don't you put your mouth on them and curse them. You love your enemies. Do good to those who spitefully use you and say all manner of evil against them. Vengeance is mine, thus saith the Lord. And I will repay in Jesus' name. So take authority. The authority that God has given you in the name of Jesus. Be careful, be watchful, be vigilant. And I see in the spirit someone, I don't know if this is a young man listening to this or if someone has a young son. Maybe he's between the age of 21 and 23 years old. It looks like he could be about 23 years old, brown skin, a little more on the lighter side, African American very charming the girls love him very attractive he loves the lord loves jesus and he has a gift of rapping a gift of rapping gospel music god is going to bless him tremendously and at the same time god has something else for him to do he's not sure if he should pursue this rapping career necessarily and he's good he's definitely good but God has greater for him at the same time there will be opportunities where he can exercise that gift of rapping for the kingdom of God it's all beautiful music to the ears of the father there is no concrete way to praise and worship the father as long as we are respectful and reverential when we're doing it whatever gift that we have and this is why people have to close their mouths about putting their mouths on our young people and one another. God has given us these gifts. God has given these young people these gifts. So who in the world are we to tell them that rap? rap music when they're edifying the Lord and when they're speaking the word of God is wrong when God is the one that gave them that gift that they're giving back to him 
when others are being set free that can relate to that generation, can relate to those lyrics that they may be spitting. They are not going to listen to us, old heads, not all the time. They may not be able to relate to us. There is a significant change versus when we were coming up. The language isn't even the same. The methods of God never change. His word never change. But sometimes the way it's carried out, it changes. And that's what I mean by the methods change. If I said the methods does not change, I correct myself. The methods does change. But the word of God stays the same. God can speak through a donkey. He's done it before. The devil sm spoke through a snake. God can do anything. So we've got to be more supportive and prayerful for our young people. But back to what the Lord is showing me in the spirit. This young man is between, he's in the valley of decision. Should he pursue the rap careers? Should he pursue something else? God is going to give him clarity. God is going to give him clarity on what to do. He will have many opportunities to rap and, and bless so many people all over the world. But God has something specific for him to do. And he's going to drive that thing. He's going to thrive. He's a very valuable asset to the kingdom of God. And if he obeys, he'll never want for anything. So we thank you, God, in the name of Jesus, Heavenly Father, for your word. We thank you, Heavenly Father, that all that has taken advantage of your people, Heavenly Father, will see declining. And as they decline and we incline, we don't laugh at their misfortune, but we pray. There's a lot of people that are going to through marital issues, Heavenly Father. Restaurants and things are closing. Family businesses are being destroyed because of so many issues and infidelity. And because these people have taken advantage of your people for so very long. And God, you said that you are a just God and you will repay. And because of their own sin and own doing, they've reaped the consequences thereof. The same people we saw going up, as we go up, we're going to see them coming down is what I see in these last days. Father, we pray that God, you provide a soft cushion as they come down. Don't let them hit the ground and kill themselves. We're asking God in the name of Jesus, in their trouble, in their dilemma, that you would please, Father, save them. Please grant them the heart to receive you and to understand where they've gone wrong and to get it right before it's too late. We love you. We honor you. And thank you for thanking so much of us to give us a word, God, today or tonight, wherever your people are listening in Jesus' name. May the words, God, of our mouths and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. Oh, God, our Savior, our Redeemer, our Father and Friend. We sign this prayer in Jesus' name. And we seal it, God, in his precious blood. Amen.